morning. My name is Father Aipa. I am in Tamil Nadu, India. And uh, today I am going to talk about Misericordiae, Vultus, uh, Pope Francis's document on the year of mercy. Misericordiae, Vultus. Misericordiae means mercy. Vultus means face. Face. So face of mercy. So God face is mercy. Jesus Christ face was mercy and the Trinitarian face is mercy, reflecting only mercy. Mercy is the foundation of this universe, for the existence of the universe. Ex nihilo, from nothing, everything came. You know why? It's not ex nihilo, there was mercy, compassion. In that case, we can't say from nothing. There was something that was mercy. I think it is an energy of the cosmos and uh, maybe it is a boson. People talk about the, the indivisible particle of matter. They call it boson. We, once upon a time we called it um, quark or muon, guon or we called it um, atom but today it's known as boson. So I think that boson is mercy itself. So God created everything, the whole cosmos, the energy, the matter, everything came from mercy. Yes. I don't know whether boson is true or not, but I know 100% everything came from mercy. So that is the thing what Pope is writing in Misericordia, Hultus. Paragraph number 15, in which he says, let us open our eyes and see the misery of the world. The misery. Ecology, environment, natural world, the species, the plants and animals, humans, the land, the water, they are facing misery, misery of the world. Which can be healed only misery called the A, mercy. Misery and mercy. Wow! They sound one, isn't it? Misery of the world can be healed only with the mercy. That is a resource in our heart. Human beings full of their pack of energy. What kind of energy? Mercy. So Pope is writing in the paragraph number 15, we should reach out to the outermost fringes of our existence. We need to reach to frontiers. There are so many people living in slums, in outermost edges of our habitats, society. Some people live not in the village, outside. They are discriminated. In India we call them Dalit people and we have put them out. And those people need our attention. And we need to go and include them in our society. We are excluded from the society for that. Almost thousands of years. So they are living in misery and they need mercy. So Pope is talking about those who live in the fringes, outermost fringes, in the frontiers. Not only humans and also animals and plants. I think in the whole of the document, Misericordia Vultus, uh, all the 25 chapters, they talk about uh, showing mercy to human species. But I think Pope is writing in the 15th, I think very generally, this is the only one paragraph reaches to other parts of the natural world, except humans. The other 24 paragraphs only for humans. But here, outermost fringes of existence. That means we go beyond anthropocentric realm. We go beyond human and we talk about animals and plants because they are living in misery too. And the land and the water, the elements of the earth, the fire, the sky and the air, all the Panjabhutas, we are polluting them all, destroying them all. And they need mercy. They are in miserable condition. That's why Pope is writing. 
we should open our eyes and see the misery of the world. So that is what we are observing. So only one solution, only one uh, uh, thing can heal the whole cosmos is mercy. Mercy can recreate. Mercy can uh, rearrange our relationships. Mercy can bind and heal the balm of mercy. It can bind everything. The broken hearts, the broken uh, ties, the broken relationships in society, uh, the divisions, the caste problems, the discriminations, the rich and poor, all those disparities can be healed with the balm of mercy. So that is what Mr. Ricordier Voltos means. And Pope is talking about two important things in the prayer of number 15. He talks about uh, the, the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. I think the church has been teaching for the past 500 years these two uh, forms of uh, piety, the two forms of practice. One is the corporal works of mercy, another one is the spiritual works of mercy. I'll just tell you what is the uh, corporal works of mercy means. That is to take care of the physical uh, life of our existence, to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, that, to clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, heal the sick, visit the imprisoned and bury the dead. This is a corporal um, works of mercy. Jesus himself says, from the Gospels we learn and Jesus teaches that these are the uh, physical uh, works of or corporal works of mercy. So the second category is spiritual works of mercy. What are they? Pope is writing to counsel the doubtful, instruct the ignorant, admonish sinners, comfort the afflicted, forgive offenses, bear patiently those who do us ill and pray for the living and the dead. So that is the spiritual works of mercy. So year of mercy focuses on these two actions. One is the uh, corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. So all you all right, I'm going to read now a paragraph number 15 from Mr. Ricordier Voltos. Pope Francis writes as follows. In this holy year, we look forward to the experience of opening our hearts to those living on the outermost fringes of society. Fringes which modern society itself creates. How many uncertain and painful situations there are in the world today. How many are the wounds borne by the flesh of those who have no voice because their cry is muffled and drowned out by the indifference of the rich. <clears throat> During this jubilee, the church will be called even more to heal these wounds, to assuage them with the oil of consolation, to bind them with mercy, and cure them with solidarity and vigilant care. Let us not fall into humiliating indifference or a monotonous routine that prevents us from discovering what is new. Let us ward off destructive cynicism. Let us open our eyes and see the misery of the world. The wounds of our brothers and sisters who are denied their dignity and let us recognize that we are compelled to heed their cry for help. May we reach out to them and support them so they can feel the warmth of our presence, our friendship and our fraternity. May their cry become our own and together may we break down the 
barriers of indifference that too often reign supreme and mask our hypocrisy and egoism. It is my burning desire that during this jubilee the Christian people may reflect on the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. It will be a way to reawaken our conscience too often grown dull in the face of poverty. And let us enter more deeply into the heart of the gospel where the poor have a special experience of God's mercy. Jesus introduces us to these works of mercy in his preaching so that we can know whether or not we are living as his disciples. Let us discover the, these corporal works of mercy to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, heal the sick, visit the imprisoned and bury the dead. And let us not forget the spiritual works of mercy to counsel the doubtful, instruct the ignorant, admonish sinners, comfort the afflicted, forgive offenses, bear patiently those who do us ill, and pray for the living and the dead. That's beautiful right? That's beautiful right? So I think paragraph number 15 from Misery called the Vultus says it all. As I told you, don't stop at only human level. That is the mistake we have done so far. We limited our care and concern and mercy and compassion only to humans. That is the mistake we have done for the past 4 million years or 10,000 years. So that is why the other parts of the natural world is suffering. So that is what Pope is writing. Outermost fringes of our existence. That is the word he uses. That means it is unlimited. You can include animals and plants and land and everything. So our mercy, not only to the humans, and also our natural world, all the elements deserve our human uh, compassion and mercy. You know why? Because God cares for them. God shows mercy for them. Remember, Jesus went to the desert just to look at the soil in the desert. In the desert, so much of soil. So he starts off his mission after the baptism so beautifully, just looking at the soil with mercy. When the devil came and told, change these rocks into bread, he says, no. No, leave them alone. They have got their own right of existence as they are. They are stones. They are not supposed to become bread. Okay, devil, you understand what I mean? So leave them alone. Mercy to the stones. And mercy to the fish, he shows. Don't catch the fish, those 12 disciples, he says. Come after me, I'll give you different work. Don't hurt those poor creatures. See the compassion and mercy. And the snake, in Judaism, snake was abused because, remember, in the first chapter of Genesis, snake became the tenter. He induced to commit sin, that's what the Bible says. But Jesus tells, no, he's a beautiful creature. Be prudent like snake, he says. Wow. That is blasphemy for Jews. <laughs> they are telling us, poisonous snake is a demon. But Jesus says, learn from the snake. Prudent. The Taos. Because during his offering in the temple, he offered two doves, turtle doves, which were massacred, according to Leviticus chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. Those necks of the doves were twisted and then they were killed because religion recommends, sanctions this kind of good or evil, I don't know. So Jesus is showing compassion to those doves. He says, be innocent like doves. In other words, you learn from doves, you learn from snake. When you have mercy and compassion, I think you go beyond your own values, value system. It dissolves all our uh, relativism, all our anthropocentric philosophies and theologies. theologies. 
and it goes beyond to a realm where only God can understand. So at last Jesus takes the sheep on him and put his own shoulders. He says, I am the good shepherd. I don't eat this sheep because the Judaism celebrates Passover, roasted lamb and bitter herbs. That's a celebration. Millions of sheep have been abused and massacred. But Jesus wouldn't do that. He says, I will not eat you. On the other hand, I will give my life to you. John 10, 10. I came to give life, life in abundance. That says it all. When you have mercy, you give your life in abundance. You don't care. You live for others. When you have mercy, you become an offering to the world and to the society and to the cosmos. After all, what better way you can end your life? What better way you can envision your own um, destiny? I think becoming offering to the cosmos. So I think year of mercy is about offering yourself. So you are not offering holy life, at least compassion. Compassion is your part of existence, your part of being. So it's not like monetary, like I take money and give it to you. That's immaterial. Anybody can do that, isn't it? Anybody can give incentives. Anybody, government can give money. And rich can give you money. But what about compassion? This is more vibrant. This is something special. <clears throat> something from within. We care for others. And I give my life. Giving compassion is giving life. So anyway, Misery Kordo, Kordia Vultus, written by Pope Francis. Uh, at the inauguration of the year of mercy and paragraph number 15 please read it and i hope you will enjoy it and have a nice day and god bless